Menus are one of the very important user interface elements that users use this feature in order to navigate through different sections of our platform and product. In this video, we're gonna create a simple expandable menu with all its own uh, macro interactions and macro animations in the Figma. My name is Kia and here's the Kimo. Welcome to another episode of the Kimo Lab. In today's design process, I'm going to use the atomic approach, which means we are going to create simple a piece of elements which we can actually combine together and produce our final component which is more complex than the others. Before we go further in this process, if you're new here, please don't forget to subscribe my channel, check the other video as well and stay tuned for the future upcoming videos. Now let's get started. The first step would be importing all the icons that I would need in this project. I'm using the Feather Icon plugin in order to find the icons. I add the icons to the file. In order to manage my icons in my asset list, I select all of them and add icon slash to the beginning of the name of all of the icons. In order to change the name of the multiple layers altogether, we can select all of them and then we can use the combination of Ctrl R or Command R in the Mac in order to rename all of them. We just do this step in order to manage our asset in the asset list. Now we convert all the icons to the component and as you can see we can find the icons in the asset list. We can change the icons easily from the properties panel and select the icons that we have in the asset list directly from there. This will ease our job later on when we want to change the icon for a component that has an icon. Now it's time to create the tab items that I want to use in my menu. I just add a text and then group it with my icon and then apply auto layout on it. I add margin from top and down and left and bottom and then add a background to it and then increase the border radius to the 8 pixel. The next step would be finding my color palette that I want to use in my project. I use the color plugin in order to find the colors that I want. I go to the Explore tab and try to select one of the combinations that is existing there. And then quickly copy paste the color code there that I have better access to it. Now I want to create different variant of the tab item. I just copy paste it and rename it to Collapse. This item would be the same thing but without the text. Now I want to create different state for the same elements. So just copy paste them and rename them from default to hovering state. I do this process again and this time I rename it from hovering state to click state. Now I create two different variants, one when it is collapsed and one when it is expanded and three different states which is indicating different style for different uh, let's say usage when it's hovering, when it's default or when it's clicked. I just rename the properties in order to manage my project better. Now I want to create a component that has multiple, uh, let's say, tabs in it. So I just create a frame and add the component that we created before to it. I just apply auto layout on the frame and then set the width of the element inside the frame uh, to the fill. In this way, actually, the element inside the frame will follow the size of the frame, which is the parent element. Now I just adjust the text and the icons in order to create more realistic menu. The next thing is I just want to have two more items and bottom of my menu. So uh, I just create a divider, which is just normal rectangle and set the height of it to the fill. And then I just add two more, let's say a tab to the bottom of my menu. Now it's time to set up our interaction in our tab component. I connect the default state to the hovering state and then set the, uh, let's say, type of uh, interaction to the while hovering. I connect the hovering state to the clicked state and then set the uh, type of interaction to the unclick. For all two cases, I use the auto animate as a type of my animation in order to have a smoother transition between the states. I do the same thing for the second variant and as you can see, that's the result. In the next step, I'm trying to create the complex expandable menu, which is going to be the final 
component. I'm adding the component that we created before, which is our list, and also create another element, which is going to be the profile picture, the name, and maybe just the role of the uh, avatar. And then add it to the my main frame, which is going to be the menu at the end. I just adjust the gap between each element, the size of the avatar, the size of the text and the color of it. In the next step, I will add another button, which is later on user will interact with it in order to collapse or expand the menu. Then I will create a, a component out of this uh, element and then to create another variant for it. In the second variant, all the text would be hide. This is going to be our, let's say, collapsed uh, state. Now I'm using the prototyping tools in order to uh, define how user can switch between these two uh, variants. I add my menu component from the asset list to my frame, and here you are, you can see the result that we can just uh, collapse the menu or open it and expand it by just clicking on the menu button. I hope you learned something new from this video. If you enjoy it, please don't forget to like it and leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Let's learn together and see you in the next video.